Kimberly Wilkins is an alumna and instructor in the School of Design, the Director of Undergraduate Studies for Industrial Design, with an affiliate position in the Department of Urology. Kimberly contributes to UIC's Innovation Center as a dedicated design faculty and resource for many and varied disciplines. She provides guidance and education on the research and development process for doctors, faculty, and students of all levels and backgrounds. Kimberly has had a big impact in the world of design, having developed products for brands such as McDonald's, Kraft, and Hefty. She recently launched her own design studio, 5x5 Design Lab, a product development firm servicing companies worldwide. Kimberly balances her research and professional pursuits through her teaching, which has resulted in globally presented and award-winning student work, and has been featured in the Industrial Designers Society of America's 2017 Educational Symposium entitled, What's Trending in ID Education? Please welcome Kimberly Wilkins. My professional background in industrial design has been focused on structural packaging within the household, personal care and food and beverage areas, as well as toys for the past 13 years, which has resulted in five US patents. But sometimes I get asked, how did you manage to steer your way into medical device design and healthcare delivery? Wasn't it difficult? A student recently put everything into perspective for me. He said, designers are trained novices. And what he meant was that designers are trained to inject themselves into any situation, regardless of one's comfort level or previous exposure, for the sake of education, with the hopes of improving a problem or leveraging an opportunity. We are trained to view the, ver the world from a different perspective, as well as consider perspectives pre previously unknown to us. For instance, when someone asks for a better toaster, we say, let's find a better way to toast bread. Or in a scenario more relevant to today's topic, when a doctor asks for a better tool, we say, let's find a better way to interact with our tools. This wonderful facility we are sitting in houses various labs that bring different facets of our institution together for the sake of a simple objective, innovation. Over two years ago, Peter Fanner and Dr. Craig Niederberger expanded my perspective on discovery, collaboration, and to my own impressive ability to not pass out while observing open surgery. My introduction to the UR Lab, one of the first interdisciplinary labs housed here at the Innovation Center, was working alongside Dr. Ohad Shashani, a fellow within the urology department focusing on male infertility, a specialty within urology that relies heavily on the microscope during minimally invasive surgical procedures. He had noticed that although his hands seemed steady during open surgery, once under the microscope at 25 times magnification, they could appear out of control. Recommended techniques to help combat or at least minimize the impact of these tremors are direct alterations to the surgeon's quality of life. For instance, don't drink caffeine or don't lift heavy objects like your children. Current work being done in this area included redesigning the microsurgical tools with costly technology that would not only make it universally inaccessible to all, but require additional training. And for an occupation that already requires extensive training and education, adding another complex medical device seemed like the wrong approach. So instead of designing a new tool, we asked, let's find a better way to interact with our tools. The wonderful benefit of working with an interdisciplinary collaborative environment is the ability to tap those different disciplines as needed for the sake of research and development. Observations of different microsurgical procedures were conducted to get a better sense of the problem, which inadvertently exposed other problems within the operating room, but we'll get to that later. In the end, in collaboration with Dr. Shoshani, as well as with feedback and support from UR lab members, which includes doctors, faculty, and students of every level in medicine, engineering, and design, the anti-tremor tool, or ANT, was developed. Loosely inspired by the insect of a similar name, it is a modular and adaptable surgical tool holder that dampens and controls small movements during microsurgery. Currently in its prototype stage, the ANT is exploring materials, part interaction, and manufacturing opportunities like 3D printing to further accomplish a custom and efficient tool for all. So let's go back to all those other problems I alluded to that we found within the operating room. Within two different observations of testicular sperm extraction and a vasectomy reversal, I compiled enough potential work for myself and anyone willing to join me for the next 10 years. Some of these common but overlooked issues include housekeeping, impact to ongoing education during procedures, and something we like to call the multi-surgeon struggle, all the way to uncomfortable postures and unnecessary adaptations surgeons make to adjust themselves to their tools and environment 
instead of the other way around. We have our work cut out for us. Over a year ago, Dr. Tolu Bakari, Dr. Shoshani's successor in the Urology Fellowship Program, came to me with a simple problem. Her neck hurt. She shared with me the previous day's surgical um, procedure had resulted in her feeling incredibly sore and stiff in her neck and back areas. So I asked to observe her next surgical procedure so I might find a cause for her pain. And after the first 10 minutes, we had multiple culprits to her ongoing musculoskeletal issues. The common thread was the need for access to the patient or surgical site. Now this doesn't seem like a problem, but let me paint a broader picture for you. In any surgery, there are two surgeons, an attending and an assisting, which can include a fellow or resident that are conducting the procedure directly over the surgical site from opposing sides of the patient. In the case that I observed, there were three doctors. One would be swapping out for another after a period of time. All the surgeons are of different statures. Dr. Bakari is five foot zero, Dr. Bagani is five foot seven, and Dr. Niederberger, whom Dr. Bakari would be swapping with, is five foot 11. The problem I was witnessing was that each of these differently sized doctors were forfeiting a degree of their own comfort so another colleague could regain some comfort back, all while attempting to access the surgical site. And to add another layer on top of this, they were doing this for four, eight, even 16 hour procedures. Now we had predicted that poor posture was one of the culprits to Dr. Bakari's pain, so I designed and made a tool to take with me into the operating room, a kind of protractor for posture to validate the, the problem with actual numbers. The surgeon posture indicator tool was accompanying me into procedures from day one, allowing me to compile data and further strengthening my case for the following. Overall comfort of a surgeon is negatively impacted by ineffective means of accessing a patient during microsurgical procedures. So what we set out to do was to create devices that provide support and comfort for these surgeons so their environment and tools would adapt to them, not the other way around. As of today, an early prototype of an adaptable forearm stabilizer has been built and tested outside of the operating room. But there is still more work to do, so we have tapped an extremely bright and talented group of UIC undergraduates in mechanical engineering to explore materials, mechanisms, and durability for their senior design course. So no one person can make change by themselves. Interdisciplinary collaboration for the sake of pursuing feasibility, desirability, and viability in the, the marketplace is the key to innovation, which is the basis for the Innovation Center, and why I'm proud to be conducting research and development here at UIC.